Hi, I'm Felix Wong. Um, today I'm going to talk about some of our recent work in uh, digging tweets from the presidential election last year. So, introduction. Um, so, as all of you know, Twitter is a big data source about people's real-time opinions on different issues. Uh, last year there was the presidential election, so uh, there's a huge amount of activity in Twitter. Uh, expressing people's thoughts on the event. And uh, we would like to see what we can do by tapping into this data source. Uh, as a first step, we try to understand the political demographics of the Twitter population. Uh, again, the first step of this is to find a way to quantify the political leaning of prominent Twitter users, uh, mostly uh, media sources or uh, celebrities. Uh, the application of this is multifold. Uh, we can use it to help predict election outcomes using social media. Uh, we can use it to build a better Twitter aggregator to get people's opinions in real time in a balanced and fair way. And before I go into the uh, specifics of our approach, we uh, survey some of the existing approaches. Uh, so mainly there are two approaches. Uh, first of all is graph-based. So what you do is uh, you observe something, uh, for example, who follows who on Twitter, who retweets who on Twitter. And then we define some notion of pairwise distance between users and then use it to build a graph. And then given this graph, we uh, do score propagation. What it means is we have some people with known political positions, like the presidential candidates themselves, and then propagate scores along the graph to give everyone a score. Uh, the other way we can do it is we get the pairwise distances, so we can do multidimensional scaling. Basically what it means is we solve some kind of optimization problem to fit uh, people into a geometric space, which best uh, minimizes the error. Uh, so uh, this is a good approach, uh, but the difficulty is how do we uh, interpret the computed scores. Uh, the second approach is what I call the statistical approach. Uh, so the way we do it is we uh, propose a generative model um, uh, which tries to generate the observations we see given some parameters. Uh, and then given the observations, we um, estimate the uh, statistical parameters and then use them as political leaning scores. Uh, while this is a good approach in terms of we have statistical tests, uh, we have statistical interpretations, uh, the problem here is uh, the estimation problem itself is usually computationally intractable and we need to assort, uh, resort to approximations. Uh, given these two approaches, um, we have two big questions. Uh, the first is philosophical, so what is political leaning? How do we define it in a simple way and in a uh, meaningful way? And the second question is practical, so how do we get a very simple method um, to do it? Uh, simple in terms of uh, modeling assumptions and also uh, computationally. Um, so our contributions, um, we propose a simple technique um, based on convex optimization. Uh, it's also based on the uh, premise that uh, tweeting and retweeting behavior are consistent. Uh, our approach can also be uh, interpreted as a first order model which gives uh, useful results. It can be used for, uh, as a basis for more refined methods later on. Um, our method also computes uh, scores that have the operational interpretation that um, if a person gets a political leaning score of Y, uh, then uh, on average, a retweet of this person uh, would show an amount Y of supporting a certain political candidate. Uh, so in the presidential election, there are many events happening. Um, so we fix one event, I, um, which can be the presidential debates, one of them. And then uh, we can compute a tweet approval score on Twitter population on this event. Uh, a simple way to do it is we collect all the tweets relevant to the event, and then we do sentiment analysis on it. Uh, what it means is we see it, we compute tweet score per tweet. So we look at the words inside the tweets, uh, and then we see whether it's positive about the candidate. And then uh, we can assign a score, for example, plus one to uh, a tweet if it supports a certain candidate. 
and a minus one if it's uh, against the same candidate. And then we average over all the tweets, and then we compute uh, approval score on tweeting. Uh, we call it Y1. Uh, at the same time, we also compete, co compute uh, retweets uh, approval score. Um, so again, on the same event, we uh, get a set of retweets relevant. And then um, we define AIJ as the proportion of uh, retweets by uh, retweets of user J that's relevant uh, to the event. Uh, the proportion is computed over all users that we want to estimate their political leaning. And then uh, on the same set of users, we, uh, for every such user J, we let XJ be the political leaning score of this user. Uh, in the same scale of yj, yi as defined previously. And then the retweet approval score can be calculated as the average of uh, the political leaning scores per user xj, j, uh, weighted by aij. So what does this mean? Um, intuitively, um, Suppose there's an event, uh, for example, um, Obama winning the election. So uh, what would we expect to see is we have a lot of people uh, tweeting about the event uh, congratulating Obama. And at the same time, they would also retweet others uh, who they agree with. And suppose this consistency uh, condition is true. Then we have the uh, two scores that we computed before, and they should be similar. And then we can frame this as a uh, regularized least squares problem, uh, as shown here. Uh, so now we have finished the part about theory. We talk about the data. Uh, to evaluate our uh, method, we collected tweets in a span of seven months throughout the whole election. Um, and uh, the tweets contain uh, mentions of the presidential candidates and their political parties. And overall, we got 190 million tweets and uh, 350 gigs of raw data, which is uh, respectable. And we identified 9.9 .9 million users. And by looking at the time series of activity, we identified 12 events. Uh, for visual purposes, I'm going to show a little animation. Uh, So basically, uh, what I did is I uh, look at the tweets of the election day, and I identify the uh, top uh, 50 hashtags mentioned. And then I try to plot their uh, interaction in a graph. It's coded in Python. <laughs> So, thanks. Uh, and now we go to some basic properties of our data. Uh, in terms of tweeting activity per user, uh, we find the data to be highly skewed uh, in terms of activity. So we have significant activity over decades. Um, but even more interesting is the retweet popularity is even more skewed. Um, we see even more significant activity over uh, multiple decades. And we see one outlier, which is Obama, uh, with a little artifact at the end of the line, because Obama is orders of magnitude more popular than others. And we also plot the tweeting activity by uh, time. Uh, recall that I identified 12 events. So we see some peaks basically several months before uh, the election itself. And of course, the election day uh, attracts the most attention towards the end. And in computing the uh, tweets approval scores, we do lexicon-based sentiment analysis on it. Uh, the dynamic range is between minus 1 and plus 1. Uh, but we see uh, sentiment scores uh, to be relatively close to 0. So the data set is relatively balanced. And results of our uh, methods. Um, so we apply it to a small scale of 20 media outlets. Um, 
the results here show that it matches with our convention, conventional wisdom. And we also try to apply it to a thousand most popular uh, Twitter users, uh, and then we plot the score spectrum. So uh, we see two things. Uh, first of all, the media outlets are mostly at the center, uh, means they're mostly balanced. Uh, and then the uh, more political uh, users are at the ends of the spectrum. And we also try to compare it with existing results, uh, and we find good agreement uh, with results on quantifying media bias. Uh, but the difference here is they're applying it on smaller uh, sets of uh, mostly media sources. Uh, and for more details, uh, here's our recent paper. And thanks.